How's it going everybody? I'm Cherokee Ronnie and you're watching Jeep Stuff Talk Show. This is the show where we stir the pot, get information, get rumors, or get straight to the point about Jeeps. So today we're going to be talking about some things. Today we're going to be talking about a rumor that was heard and uh, Jeep has actually, I guess, jabbed at the fast sports Baja um, vehicles. In some of the interviews you can watch, they, they say they're going to have a high performance Jeep. Nobody said it was going to be the Jeep truck, but it only makes sense because what this, what we're about to talk about is kind of a, um, a jab at the ball haul trucks like Ford Raptor had. Like that was the main goal of the Ford Raptor. It's like, it's like a ball haul truck, right? So the Jeep Gladiator, supposedly, the rumor has it, it's a Jeep Gladiator, Gladiator Hercules, right? As you can see, it looks mean. It looks like it would hit the sand dunes, hit some jumps. And, but it's a jab at the Ford. That's the rumor. It's going to be a jab at the Ford because this Jeep is going to be a high-performance model Jeep um, where you can take it off-road and... Uh, you know, do you can enter in like amateur Baja contests and stuff like that. So it's just a rumor right now. It's not an actual thing. They they haven't even got the green light to even make these things yet because the Gladiator truck has not even come out yet. It's not even for sale on your lot. It will be pretty soon, but it's not even for sale on the lot. But it would only make sense, in my opinion, for the Jeep Gladiator Hercules to be the ball haul truck, to be the high performance uh, off-road vehicle that they were talking about because you have the Chevy, you have the the uh, package you can get for the Dodge, um, you have the package that you can get for the Ford Raptor, that it's like a ball haul edition truck, right? So it only makes sense if the Jeep Gladiator is the ball haul edition Hercules, right? So they might be stepping into a ring with... Um, a bunch of big men that they can't keep up with because I don't think Jeep belongs in that that um, that area okay I, I just don't I don't think it looks right maybe it's just me because I'm used to Jeeps you know rock climbing in the mud and and all this stuff but I don't think Jeep belongs in the in the Baja area I, I, I just think it's goofy but uh, like I said it hasn't been confirmed yet it's just an idea some say that they have prototypes that they're using and testing right now, which I don't know if that's true. You know how rumors are. But here lately, the last two years, rumors have been so on point. Look at the rumors about the iPhone. They were so on point just because leaked photos. But the guy in the interview says we are going to be hitting the high performance scene, you know, the truck scene, the, the Baja scene. Anyway, so it could be it could very well be that we're going to have a jeep gladiator hercules um now i wanted to be talking about the jeep gladiator hercules uh i think it's stupid i never was into the ford raptor um i was never into that scene now i do like the dodge rebels but just because they kept it old school they have smaller rims, they don't have big 20 inch rims, and they come with mud tires and stuff. And it is kind of built for off-road. But the Ford Raptors were like strictly straight up Baja machines, right? But people tried to use them, and they didn't really hold up. And that's just the reality of it. But I, I really don't like those packages. So if Jeep would come out with something like that, that's cool. Uh, other people might like them, but I'm not into. I'm not into it. Just not into the that thing. So I think this Jeep looks pretty mean. If this is like the true drawing, the true, the true look of it, 
but um, for the extra cost that you're probably paying, I don't think it'd be worth it because are you really going to go ball haul? And that's just bragging rights. It even looks better. Um, if you have the money to blow and they come out with them, sure, go ahead. But I just don't see it. I just I see the vehicle coming out, but I don't see me setting in one. Like, honestly, I, I thought the Jeep truck, the Gladiator was a, an awesome idea and everything. But because uh, we've been waiting on it for years. But I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see what comes up. I'm always I'm always in touch with the, the great sources to see that things that come true or not. And another rumor is this is just a rumor for sure because I don't see how they could come back with it. They're talking about. Coming back with a inline six motor. Now that is a rumor. I don't know if they're trying to bring back the 4.0 or they're trying to redesign and bring something back because they really can't bring back the inline six because the problem with them to begin with was emission reasons. So that is definitely just a rumor, but we'll see in the future. That would be definitely a good idea because the BMWs, they have straight sixes in them and they last forever. I don't know how they got by with it. So yeah, um, that was that was the rumor for the day. That's what we're, that's that's just I had to get that out there. I just wanted to see what you guys think. Leave in the comments below what you think. This video is live. Put stuff in the comments. The, the comments are live where I can see everything. Just want to thank each and every one of you guys for supporting this video, supporting this new talk show. Uh, I want to plug my other channel. Um, I'll leave the the link in the description below. Um, you can check out that channel if you like guitars. This is what this setup is behind me. Um, if you like guitars, I got guitar builds. Um, I got how to build budget guitars, you know, how to stay under a certain budget and all that. I got all those videos over there. And plus, I have a talk show over there called Guitar Buzz Talk Show. And I talk about rumors and guitars and gear. So if you're into things like that, you can go ahead and check that channel out. Link in the description below. Uh, I almost hit a thousand subs over there. Make sure you go over there. I have a new build coming. I'm going to be building a double cut uh, Les Paul Jr. style guitar. It's going to be a great, um, a great experience. Uh, I'm going to lacquer it and do everything. I'm going to do it cherry red. You know, I'm just going to do it all right. And I'm going to be spending a little bit extra money, so it's not going to be really budget friendly. So go ahead and over to that channel, Ronald Jr. Description is the link below, um, or the the link is in the description below. Click on it, go subscribe. It would help me out a lot. Even have an Instagram. Uh, I'll pop it up here somewhere. The the code where you can just scan it after this video is off live. You can go back and watch this video and get it. Um, so yeah. So after I got all that out of the way. Um, you, you can even uh, check out the Guitar Buzz Facebook too. I'll leave that in the description below. And I'm thinking about making a Facebook for the Jeep Stuff Talk Show. This show is starting to take off a little bit. I want it to be just like a podcast show where we're starting to talk about things. And that's what this show is about. It's not about um, how-tos or anything like that. This show is strictly just talking Jeep stuff, talking with you guys getting to know you guys better because that's one thing YouTube creators don't do. I feel like they take advantage of you. I mean, have you been on YouTube lately? People have taken advantage of people on YouTube. Yes, they plaster ads. I have ads on my video. I make a small amount of money. Not a whole lot, a small amount of money. But YouTube is getting so out of hand, people are taking advantage of the fans, and they really don't know them. They just want their money. They're opening up a Patreon. Hey, you do this, you get secret content. You get this, you get a limited edition shirt. Um, I don't like doing it that way. I thought about doing it that way, but I was like, that's taking advantage of my, of my audience. I don't really know my audience, so I want to figure out something where we can just talk. And this is the only way that we can do it and interact live. And I was like, I'm going to make a talk show, a podcast talk show. And uh, anybody that is a little bit older will appreciate these shows because I listen to shows also. Not any Jeep ones, but other shows, uh, guitar shows. And I just put my, like if I'm at work or if I'm at the house, I just let the video play and I listen to the podcast. And that's what this show is all about. So I thank each and every one of you guys for supporting it. Um, but I'm not going to take advantage of you guys. And I don't even know you guys. I'm not going to be like, hey, you get, you. you $5 Patreon, you'll get to hear this talk show. I, I don't believe in that. 
like I said, I make a small percentage off my ad revenue. The only thing I ask of you guys is to buy my shirts and um, watch my videos. That's that's all I ask. And I am going to have a limited edition t-shirt on the show if you would like to get a hold of it. There's going to be steps you can take to win it. It's going to be free. Um, you don't have to pay for it. It's going to be on me, shipped to your door, on me. So if you're interested in that, I'll tell you the instructions on that and how to win it on the next podcast talk show. So make sure you look forward to that. Make sure you tune in because it's very important that you tune in. These videos always stay up after they're live on my channel. So you can go back and watch them. I have all kinds of topics, so go check them out. But today we're going to be talking about rear ends. Rear end swaps in a Jeep Cherokee. Um, I had a 90, a 93 Jeep Cherokee. And it had the Dana 35. And it was junk. I did not like it. And I was like, I want to swap it to something... But I don't want to pay big money to something because it's going to be a trail rig, a budget trail rig. So I don't want to put a big axle in there. I don't really want to do the Ford Explorer because it re- involves cutting and stuff like that. I wanted to do something that was a little bit tough um, and swap it. Because I knew if I would go off-road with the Dana 35, it would explode and all that stuff. So what I did was I got on the internet and did not find anything. There is like yes, no, yes, no. I was like, all I want to do is swap a newer rear end, excuse me, into my older Cherokee. I wanted to put the eight and quarter, the eight and quarter in my Cherokee, my older Cherokee. And everybody's like, oh, you're gonna have dry shaft problems. You're gonna have this. You're gonna have that. You're gonna have to get a dry shaft made. Blah 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 blah. It just kept going on and on and on. And I was like, it started freaking me out. I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to do this. I'm gonna have to modify that. So why do that when I can modify this? Put this in there. So one day I got fed up with Google and asking questions. Got the eight and a quarter and the dry shaft out of the other Jeep. And what I done was put the eight and a quarter in my 93 Cherokee and used the dry shaft. It worked fine. It wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. Now the, the dry shaft that was on the Jeep itself with the Dana 35, it would not work on the eight and a quarter. So the eight and a quarter is a swap when it comes to the 93. And I'm pretty sure the lower years We'll also accept the eight and a quarter because the eight and a quarter is a little bit tougher. They say it's almost tough as a 44, but that's what the internet says. I mean, I don't even know if that's right, but I don't go by the internet. I go by my experience because I don't want to rely on information off of Google other than rumors that we just talked about. But when it comes to Jeep stuff, I'm telling you my experience, the eight and a quarter fit, the dry shaft out of the eight and a quarter donor vehicle fit my Jeep and it worked just fine. And while I was there, I have a video on my channel. You can check that out. Also, I drilled the holes out and I put U clamps in there to hold it and then had the nuts on the other on the other end. Tougher, a lot better, easier to change the dry shaft that way. And then if you can find them, you can find Dana 44s found in 87, 89 Cherokees that have the tow package. Now, not all tow package have the Dana 44, but if you can score one, you can actually get them pretty cheap. Um, believe it or not, pick up uh, What's a pool part? Uh, you can look there or junkyards and stuff like that. Some time, sometimes people don't even know what they have. Some of them have an old Jeep sitting in their yard, 87 or 89. That's the right year. I think that's what I said. It's 87, 89 that has the Dana 44 as a tow package, but uh, on some tow packages. But somebody might have one sitting in their yard and they don't even know. They're like, oh, it's just an old Cherokee. Buy this and get out of here. And I might have a Dana 44. You never know. Just So just look. So make sure you look and. Uh, and look, and that's the only the only rear ends that you can swap without any modifications. Because that is a question. You know, what, what rear end can I swap? That's not a modification. What rear end can I swap? That's not a modification. Blah, blah, blah. So these are the two rear ends that you can get without modifications that will bolt right in there. So if you have an older Cherokee that has a Dana 35, I recommend just putting a, an eight and a quarter in there. A lot of people bash on the eight and a quarter, which the problem comes in when you start running 35s. Um, sometimes 33s. It is a junky rear end, but it will get you by until you can get the rear end that you want. Um, it got me by a lot because I only ran 31s, but it got me by for a while. And and while you're while you did the eight and a quarter swap, you can go ahead and pick you up a Ford Explorer 
you know, rear end or whatever, and uh, and start modifying that, have it cut, right? Or um, because the tubes, some people have the tubes extended, or some people just put the rear end under there and they use spacers to space the wheels out. Um, whole other Reddit video talking about those rear ends, but so yeah. If you have a Dana 35, I recommend just putting the eight and a quarter under there. Make sure the gears and stuff's good. And then uh, while you're at it, be on the lookout for the rear end that you want. Modify it, fix it up, do what you need to do. And then when the eight and a quarter blows out, put it under there. You'll be actually surprised how the eight and a quarter holds up. Um, like you, you see videos where the axles fly out of them and the gears, you know, puke everywhere. Uh, but you actually be surprised how strong the eight and a quarter really is. Uh, a lot of people bash on it, but it is it is a fairly decent rear end. It's a lot better than the Dana 35. I can tell you that much. Um, I know a guy I think has 35s on his, and he he wheels he wheels a little bit different than us. Um, I know we get a lot of slack about how we wheel and how we jerk change, which you are correct. We should have something over that just in case. At the spur of the moment, you're not thinking of that, and yes, somebody could have got hurt. Um, but we grew up being West Virginia men, and we just don't think of that kind of stuff. But when it comes to off-roading, this, this the guy that I know has the Jeep with the eight and a quarter with the 35. He actually has lockers in the back. He wheels slow. He don't, he gets in the mud and he, he hones on a little bit, but he's not like we were because we just full blown just to abusing Jeeps, right? So it just depends how you drive. You got that guy that can make something that's weak last forever. That's the same way with my, my uncle and my dad, man. They can take a motor that's running on three cylinders and make that thing last for 12 years. Like it's already blowed up and they're still running it. It's just how you run vehicles and how you treat them is how things are going to work. So hope you guys enjoyed this show. Uh, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Share this show with your Jeep community and uh, everything. Hit that notification bell. This is the, the most important thing that you need to do on this channel, even if you're already subscribed. Hit the notification bell because a lot of times it does not notify you that I am going live or even uploading a video. This spring I have a lot of stuff planned. This summer I have a lot of stuff planned. And you don't want to miss out. So um, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And I, just want, I hope you guys are having a great Saturday. I hope you guys are having a great day. Like I said, make sure you go check out my channel below, my guitar channel. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for the support. I'm very happy that we can uh, sit down and, and do this and talk with the community and not be stuck up and, and, and miss your comments. And It's hard to get to some of your guys' comments. But uh, God bless you guys. I'm Cherokee Ronnie, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay dirty, my friends. Oh, boy.